station. This is NBC. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Help me. I hear you loud and clear as well. So, uh, we thank you so much for doing this. My name is Alexa. Um, we kind of took a um, stroll through some of your tweets and have an idea of how we want to frame this story. So if you don't mind, I know we only have 10 minutes. I'm just going to hop right into it. Absolutely, Alexa. Go for it. Great. So um, our first question is, I know you are a native of Baltimore, and we were wondering what it felt like to fly over your hometown for the first time. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic to fly over your home time, uh, hometown, and not just the first time, but every time. We've, uh, we've been having some great East Coast passes the last few days, and I've looked down at Washington, D.C., Baltimore, the whole I-95 corridor, going up to New York City, and uh, just knowing how many people down there I love and how many great memories I have with my family, uh, it's just amazing to fly over your hometown. It is really a wild feeling. Does it make you homesick at all? I definitely miss my kids, but it is pretty tough to be homesick when you're floating around going 18,000 miles an hour on the space station. This is a wild, great place to work. Great. And do you feel pride being a Baltimore native up there in space? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Sure. Do you feel pride being a Baltimore native when you're up there in space? Oh, absolutely. I, I feel pride, uh, not just for Baltimore, but for the whole country. Uh, right now, I'm the lone American off of, uh, off of the earth, and uh, it's a great feeling to be, be up here. I got a German buddy with me and one Russian, and uh, we're holding down the fort until uh, Barry Wilmore, Yelena, and Sasha come up here uh, next week, and we're looking forward to seeing them. So from the tweets, it looks like you're still blown away by what you see every day. Do things still surprise you? Our, what I found is our Earth is changing all the time. And uh, as we continue our orbit around the Earth, the Earth continues its orbit around the sun. And so it's always giving us a slightly different landscape. The aurora changed, the way the sun hits the oceans changes. And I, I even saw a huge snowfall across Canada, I think it was last week. Uh, so I'm starting to see even the seasons change. And it is, it is really a neat, neat experience from up here. It's always interesting. Great. So um, I'm just going to snowball off of that. You've captured some extraordinary weather events up there. What goes through your, what, through your head when you see, for example, a snowstorm or a, or a hurricane? Well, first, it, it's, it's tough to say that you see the beauty in it, but that's really what you see first. Uh, a hurricane from up here is absolutely beautiful to look at. Um, it takes your breath away when you realize just how enormous these storms are. They cover almost our entire field of view. But then you also think about what's going on uh, with the people that are underneath these storms. And you know hurricanes are super dangerous. When I see snowstorms, though, I always think that, hey, kids might be off school the next day. They might be out there riding their sleds and playing. So those are always uh, fun to look at for me. Uh, but you go through a whole different mix of emotions. Great. And let's circle back then to um, your tweets again. Um, a lot of them, you know, even though you're an accomplished astronaut, you often talk about everyday life in space like you're just any man on the street. Um, so let's just talk about a couple of things. For example, how long has it been since your last shower? <laughs> well, now uh, I was just talking with Alex. It's been 115 days since my last shower. <laughs> it's been 115 days. Yeah, we, we do. We have, uh, we have good hygiene. Uh, we have uh, wetted towels that we get to use with soap and all that. But it has been 115 days since my last wonderful warm shower. And what about having a coffee maker up in space now? What's that like? Well, it depends. If it's your buddy making the coffee using our water dispenser here, it's super easy. Actually, it's easy no matter what. And uh, drinking coffee out of a bag, you don't get any of the delicious aroma like you would in the morning at home drinking out of a coffee cup. But still, it's absolutely delicious. And just having that nice warm beverage in the morning, that's a little slice of home that we love up here. Great. And what has been the biggest adjustment you've had to go through with zero gravity? That's exactly it. Zero gravity. Everything floats. Uh, I float. 
my insides float, my food floats. When I take a screw out of a piece of hardware, if it's not captive, it floats, my tools float. And uh, that has definitely been, it's the most difficult, but it's also the kind of the most enjoyable part of being up here, is just learning a whole new way. Learn, your body has to learn a new way to work, to think, to eat. It's just, it's really, 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 really cool. Now, you're the first U.S. astronaut, I would say, to become a bona fide social media star. How do you think life would have been different if, for example, Neil Armstrong had Twitter when he landed on the moon? Uh, first of all, we would still be reading those tweets that he sent down uh, from the moon with his crew. And uh, just to be able to share that experience so intimately, could you imagine just being able to kind of walk with them on the moon to see high definition video uh, sent down almost real time from what they're doing? I, that would have been amazing and I really hope we go back someday. The moon and asteroid Mars, it doesn't matter. I think that that's gonna be absolutely wild to go along on that adventure with them. What has social media enabled you to do for space? Oh, that's a tough question. I haven't tried to do anything. All I want to do is share this unique world that we live in uh, through social media, through photos, and really I wanted to try to bring video into it because adding motion to our world up here is really what it's all about. Seeing, seeing thunderstorms, seeing the earth turning away, the sun rising or setting, watching hardware float around. To me, it's the video that really captures the imagination of living up here. Great. And then let's talk a little bit about um, the students that you speak to in the classrooms that you speak to. Why is it so important to you to speak to them as often as you do? And was just wondering, in addition to that, what they're most curious about. Well, let's start with the, the last half of that question. What they're most curious about usually is the imaginative stuff. How do you go to the bathroom? How do you eat? What's it like to float? What's it like to look back at the earth? So you can tell their, their young minds are thinking about all those crazy things that we get to experience and love up here. Um, why is it so important to talk to them? You never know when your little piece of outreach is going to have a connection with one, two, a dozen students. And if you can just, just trigger them a little bit, just give them a little motivation to, to study science, technology, engineering, and math in their lives, uh, then that's time very well spent for us. And then just in terms of the fact that, you know, so many little kids growing up want to be astronauts when they grow up, do you think that the social media, the, the photos and the tweets and, and the videos that you've been able to bring to them has influenced them at all? Oh, I know it's I know it's influenced them. It influences their parents. It's influenced my friends. So certainly this this sort of effort to get the message out, uh, it definitely works. There's no doubt about it. And then in the simplest way, how would you explain what you are doing up there in space? Really, it boils down to just a few simple things. We are conducting science. That's our main objective up here. And that is what we are spending almost right now three quarters of our day doing. And then the other thing we're doing is we're taking care of our bodies because in weightlessness, our, uh, our bones decay, our muscles can decay. So we have countermeasures. We're on the treadmill a lot and on a workout machine to keep our muscles and bones strong. And then also, this is our home, uh, this is our laboratory, and we need to upkeep it. So we're working on maintenance, fixing things, installing new fuel samples, uh, that sort of work. And that really, that's it in a nutshell. But it keeps us busy 12 hours a day. Great. And I think we have about 30 seconds left. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, it's just it's really great to get to talk to you. And uh, I enjoy these events a lot. And uh, also, it's wonderful working with my two crewmates up here. These are great guys. And I'm very lucky to be off our planet right now. Great. Well, it was lovely speaking with you. Thank you so much for talking to us today. And have a great day up there. Have a great day up there. Absolutely. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the NBC interview. Thank you.